Welcome to the next lecture of our course, Selenium with CSharp.net. And this we will be talking about the continuation of page object model code. If you remember, in our last video, we discussed about page object model code and what is page object model and how the page object model code can be written using a class file and how this whole abstraction of writing everything in a single class file can be used within your test so that you always have a clear separation of your test as opposed to the locator sitting along with your test itself. So now we're going to continue the discussion that we already left in our last video. So as you remember, in our last video, we created these locators in this particular class file, and also we performed the operations like click login and the login over here. The next operation which I need to do right now is to call these methods in my test and show how the test is going to reduce the number of lines of code that we have over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write another method over here. I'm going to call this as test and I'm going to say public void test with POM. And within this particular method, I'm going to start writing the code that we have already written over here. So I'm going to copy this whole two lines because this is required. And the next thing is I'm going to perform the page object model initialization. So POM, maybe just like that, POM initialization so for doing the initialization if you remember in our last video we created this login page class so i'm going to call this login page class and you will notice that it is sitting in the namespace of dot net selenium dot pages dot login page so once i add that you will notice that we will get a namespace added over here so just in case you have not seen that happening before so i'm going to say login page over here and you will notice that we have the namespace using .NET Selenium .pages been added because now we are referring to this type login page which is created under the pages folder cool so now we have the login page and I'm gonna say login page is equal to new of the login page and if you remember in our last video while we are trying to create we also created a constructor or otherwise called as the default constructor in C sharp for this particular class file with iWebDriver. So we have to pass the driver instance only then it could locate the element using that particular object that we have got over here. So we definitely need the driver instance. So that's the reason why we are going to pass the driver that we have created over here in line number one to this particular constructor, something like this. So now we have initialized the page object model. So once we have this initialization, we are then going to perform clicking of the login link and then performing the login operation itself. So for doing that, I'm going to say login page dot click login. Do you see that we get this particular method over here as click login? And this is coming because we have the method over here, this particular page, as click login. Similarly, we need to perform the login operation. And for that, I'm going to say login page dot login. And over here for the login, I'm going to enter the username as admin and password as password. As simple as that. So you may notice that this particular code is now even more readable, right? Because this is so verbose that it perform so many different operations and for a new tester or maybe you itself after some time if you come back to this code and if you read this code it is going to be very very hard for you to understand like what you have written because there are so many moving parts here like identification using a locator and then performing an action over here and then you keep on writing so many things over here it's not so readable but for anybody who's going to do a pr or the review of your code it's very easy for them to read through what you are trying to write. Basically, you have initialized the page, you're clicking the login link, and then you're gonna perform a login operation. There we go. That's the operation that you have done, and it is super readable, and it is very, very shorthand as well, as supposed to this big lines that you have seen. Now, finally, the showdown is to see how the execution is gonna happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and right-click the test with POIM test method, and it should perform essentially same operation that happened before as well. There we go, the browser has opened and it should perform the login operation. There we go, it has did that and the login is completed. So the test is successfully completed as well. So this shows or proves the point that our page object model code just works fine without any problem. So with this code, we can now leverage like how we can keep on creating multiple different pages. 
For example, within our website, you can see that we have the employee list page. We also have create user page, edit user page, benefit page, and we also have delete page. So we have so many different pages within our application. So we can keep on creating locators based on the pages that we have got. And that way the coding is going to be much, much easier as a page object model code. So that way we can maintain the code more easily as well. So now that you have got the first flavor of how you can work with the page object model code in Selenium. Starting our next video, we'll see how we can customize this whole code with our custom Selenium method code that we have written in our last lectures.